Hello YouTube, this is the Nerobin and today I want to talk some more about Traveller by Mongoose Publishing. Uh, today I want to focus on the tools this book uh, gives the GM uh, at hand, um, which are quite nice in um, for world building. Um, and adventure creation if you use them wisely. If uh, you don't do not know what you're doing this will probably give you the feeling that you have everything at hand and it won't work as you want it to. Um, let me start uh, with world building because that's quite nice. Um, you have uh, a vast standard setting, as uh, I already mentioned, the Third Imperium. But one of the fun parts of Traveller is that you, uh, since the beginning, you got um, rules for creating your own universe or systems for creating your own universe better. Um, the uh, standard Traveller star map is uh, two-dimensional, so if uh, it, it's not totally realistic, but at least you can uh, visualize it, uh, whereas a three-dimensional map is often um, quite complicated. Uh, if you want to use such things, there are free uh, programs and some commercial ones as well uh, on the internet uh, that you can use to create three-dimensional star maps. Uh, let me just look where the example is. Ah, here. A standard traveler star map looks like this. It's a hex map. And uh, here we uh, digress into interstellar travel. Um, in Traveller you use a uh, jump drive and the uh, distance you can jump with the basic uh, jump drive is one hex. And uh, the jump drives are available in six uh, different sizes and uh, each one can jump uh, the same, uh, or it's called N, standing for number, N jump drive, and you can jump N hexes, uh, going from 1 to 6. Um, usually, you uh, the players only have jump 1 to maybe 3, um, because th the jump drives take up quite a lot of space, and uh, you also need to have uh, better technology for the later versions of the jump drive. Um, so the standard subsector map, as this thing that is called that I just shown you uh, showed you, uh, is eight times ten uh, hexes wide. Uh, has an area of 10 times 8 hexes and uh, at each hex you can check if there is a star system available with a uh, main body. Um, and then this uh, book gives you uh, systems at hand to generate the main world of a system. It does not give you uh, any uh, system whatsoever to create the rest of the system. It only says uh, if there is a gas giant available or not. Um, there are other products out there that uh, go from simple to very uh, in-depth creation of star systems. Uh, maybe I will uh, talk about them later. Um, you uh, then can uh, construct this main world uh, via ro uh, rolling two dice in a succession of I think eight rolls or something. Um, and you get uh, uh, a certain digit uh, of uh, and a certain number of digits that represent the main world, and in the beginning it's really really hard to read these write-ups, but 
later it becomes quite easy when you know what you're doing uh, what you are reading there and it's uh, easy to see the whole subsector sorry <coughs> um, so uh, this is uh, the star creation uh, this also uh, gives you information about the population and the, their government and so what's nice in here they put in uh, also um, peculiarities for uh, for populations uh, so that you can um, give them a bit of local flavor <coughs> um, what else uh, <laughs> oh yes uh, there are variation uh, rules for uh, this to make the uh, world creation a bit more realistic because quite honest um, these uh, the rules for the main world have not changed since the 70s and were not even then up to date with science um, they were just to create a basic uh, map that you could change a little so that uh, it becomes more acceptable. Um, here you have uh, what they call uh, rules for space opera maps and hard science fiction. But even though the hard science fiction is mm, the most realistic of these, mm, but it's only a game. Um, <coughs> Okay, uh, what it also gives you at hand is uh, animal creation. You can, with a couple of rolls, you can create uh, an animal type for a planet and uh, uh, you can basically build uh, wildness and counter tables for different uh, climates, for different climates, so uh, wilderness adventures uh, are quite possible and um, if you know how to use random counter tables then this is a help. Um, and the random tables go on and on and on. Um, they are there for random NPCs, random uh, uh, random uh, random encounters on the ground, on the spaceport, in space um, random patrons, uh, random uh, uh, random missions from patrons um, and uh, as a starting point that's very good. Uh, if you roll up six missions and uh, tweak them a little to make them less uh, randomized and more sensible that's really really good and sometimes I've done this uh, I think I rolled up six and I even uh, found clues in this uh, uh, randomness uh, to a greater campaign uh, that I might uh, at some time use. Um, okay uh, then we have a number of uh, pre-made patrons. Uh, this time the patron is not the actual person but um, this is a format that has been in Traveller for a long time. It's um, a description of the person that uh, wants to give you a job and then uh, what kind of job this is. And then it gives you six variations of what actually uh, is behind this uh, contract offer. Uh, does he try to manipulate you to do something you wouldn't normally do? Does is he completely honest? Uh, does he know what he is doing, or is there something else going on? And so on and so on. And uh, as you know by the number, it's uh, made so that if you don't want to decide, then you can roll a die and uh, take uh, the randomized decision what actually uh, is behind this. Uh, so even if you uh, read them as a player you not uh, not necessarily know what's going on which is quite, ni uh, quite nice. 
Um, so you have uh, a few of them right for the start and uh, I think you could uh, easily do a few uh, quite a few sessions with them. Um, Hmm, this was faster than I expected. Um, uh, oh, you also have uh, randomized uh, salvage uh, in space. So if you, like Serenity, uh, want to go on uh, uh, salvage missions, uh, then this is also useful for you. Um, What topic uh, do I take next? Um, yeah, I would think, as I've mostly talked about tools for GMs, um, I will uh, elaborate on the GM theme here a bit, because I find this book, even though it gives you tools at hand, it does not lose very much words on what a GM actually, actually does. Um, I think the uh, traveler term for GM is uh, referee, um, I think there is a play uh, example in the front page, uh, in the f front of the book, about a t one or two pages long, um, and that's about it. Um, so I don't think this is a uh, this book will ha be much useful for beginners um, because. What usually in the ma in the core rulebooks there are some uh, tips how you create situations how you uh, portray NPCs and such and that's missing. Um, it's very good for building worlds but for portraying them it's um, lacking. And as far as I know, that's uh, been with Traveller since its inception. Um, there has never been something. Oh, I think there was a referee's guide at one point, but I think it was just uh, the second part of the rule book. Um, there is no literature uh, on GMing in Traveller, which is a minus point, I think. Um, also, this product is not that useful for new GMs because um, as I've already mentioned, most of the rules um, need much tweaking to be realistic, um, or at least less less strange. And the the uh, randomized character creation uh, certainly will not be something for beginning players, um, because beginning players usually want to start on equal footing, and uh, that's not. It's more. It's not a given that you will start on equal footing. It's rather an, uh, a given that if you use the randomized system, that you will not start on equal footing. Um, well, uh, I still got two minutes, so, but I think uh, I will stop here, and um, maybe I will do a wrap-up video uh, tomorrow. Uh, this was the Nerbin. Thank you for watching.